What's going on guys, Matty Russell here. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to build an aquaponics system out of IBC containers. Now before we jump into it, I do wanna let you know that this is the first video of a series of videos of how to build an aquaponics system out of IBC containers. In this video, we'll primarily be focusing on how to build the fish tank, including installing a solid lift overflow. Let's get stuck into the video. Right, so you got yourself an IBC. Now the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and cut the lid off in order to turn it into a fish tank. What I've actually seen a lot of people go ahead and do in order to convert the IBC into a fish tank is actually cut it off about here. Unfortunately, when you do that, you're actually losing about 200 liters of water and diminishing the overall capacity of the tank. So instead of doing that, we're actually gonna cut it with the angle grinder along the top here in order to maintain the majority of its capacity. But before we go ahead and do that, we actually need to move these bars on top of the cage in order to gain access to the entirety of the lid. These bars are usually secured with a star screw and you'll need a star drill bit on your drill in order to undo them. Once we've removed the screws, they just go ahead and pull straight out. Make sure you go ahead and keep the screws and the bars because once we've cut the lid off with the angle grinder, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall the bars in the IBC. Once we cut off the lid with the angle grinder, I like to go around with the rusty old blade and remove all of the swarf and sharp bits that are left over on the plastic tote from being cut with the angle grinder. If you don't want to use a rusty old blade like me, you could use a clean one. Just make sure it's sharp and it does the job. Now, when it comes to building this kind of IBC aquaponic system, it's a shift piss system, which is an acronym for constant height in fish tank and the pump in the sump tank. In this particular type of system, most of them have what's called a solid lift outlet or a solid lift overflow. What the solid lift overflow actually does is essentially acts like a vacuum that removes all the solid fish waste from the bottom of the tank up through a pipe and distributes either to the grow bed or in our case, a radial flow settler, which we'll do in the next video. But for now, let's build the solid lift overflow and install it into our fish tank. I'll show you how to do it. Now before we actually install it, it's important to identify what side of the tank we want to install it on. Now I generally like to place these valves that are in the IBC at the back of the fish tank. I position it in such a way so that it's out of sight, out of mind, and it cannot be accidentally undone without intentionally going around to the back and doing so. Now I'm actually around the other side of the backyard where this black IBC was positioned. I'm building the fish tank around here, but it will eventually go to the other side of the backyard where the other aquaponic system is already situated. So the release valve at the bottom of the IBC fish tank will be positioned down the bottom there at the rear side of the fish tank. So this will essentially be the front in as much as this is the front and the rest of the system will be running along this direction around the other side of the backyard, I'm gonna go ahead and cut a hole in the IBC right here, positioned toward the back on the right hand side where I will be installing the outlet to the solid lift overflow. Now in order to install the solid lift overflow, we create a hole in the tank here and position what's called a bulkhead fitting or in Australia, commonly referred to as a tank outlet. Now this tank outlet fitting has a gasket on either side that goes on either side of the IBC wall. The bolt goes through the hole which we create, you tighten it on and it creates a watertight seal. This bulkhead fitting is a 40 millimeter, so I'm gonna take the 50 millimeter drill bit and drill a 50 millimeter hole in the IBC.
Once we've cut the hole, we're gonna go ahead and take our rusty old knife and remove as much as the swarf around the hole as we possibly can, getting rid of any loose plastic that could jeopardize the watertight seal from the gaskets in the bulkhead or tank outlet fitting. We're gonna take our bolt with the gasket from the bulkhead fitting and position it through the inside wall to the outside of the fish tank. We're then gonna take the nut with the gasket and thread it to the outside wall. And now that we have the bulkhead fitting installed into the IBC, it's time to go ahead and install the rest of the solid lift overflow. Let's get stuck into it. But of course, before I show you how to install it, I first need to show you how to build it. First, let's talk about the horizontal section. Then we'll look at the vertical section before we install it into the bulkhead fitting in the IBC. In order to build the solid lift overflow, you're going to need a T section, a horizontal section of 40 millimeter pipe, a 45 degree angle elbow, another horizontal section of 40 millimeter pipe, a second 45 degree angle elbow, a third section of horizontal PVC pipe, and a 40 millimeter threaded adapter to connect to the bulkhead fitting. And lastly, you'll need your vertical section of PVC pipe with a 40 millimeter flange attached to the bottom. I then went ahead and drilled in some tech screws into the flange in order to elevate it off the bottom of the fish tank. Now, depending on how high up you put your tank outlet fitting in the fish tank will determine how high you need to cut the dimensions of this PVC section of pipe. It needs to go from the bottom of the fish tank being elevated by the screws up into the remainder of the solid lift overflow in the horizontal section. We want to take our 40 millimeter threaded adapter and screw it into the inside of the bulkhead fitting inside the tank. Next, we're going to take the horizontal section of the PVC pipe and slot it into the end of the adapter. From there, we take the first 45 degree angle elbow and install that onto the horizontal pipe. Next, we take our second section of horizontal 40 millimeter pipe and install it into the end of the 45 degree elbow. We then want to take our second 45 degree angle elbow and install that onto the end of the 40 millimeter horizontal pipe. We then want to take our final section of 40 millimeter horizontal pipe and install that into the end of the 45 degree elbow. We then take our 40 millimeter T section and install that under the horizontal pipe. Like so. We're then gonna take our vertical section of 40 millimeter pipe with the flange attached to the end of it and install that on the bottom side of the T fitting. Now let me give you a quick rundown of how a solid lift overflow actually works. In as much as we'll have a constant flow of water being pumped into the tank, the flange at the bottom of the solid lift overflow acts as a vacuum and sucks up all the solid fish waste from the bottom of the tank. It is sucked up the pipe through the T-section, around the elbows and exits the tank through the bulkhead fitting. And just quickly, the reason we have a T-section here instead of an elbow at the top of the vertical pipe is to prevent a siphon from initiating. If the siphon was to initiate and the pump stopped working, then the siphon through the solid lift overflow would essentially drain the entire tank, resulting in a whole bunch of dead fish. And that's definitely something that we don't want to happen. Now in this system, as is the same with the system that I have around the other side of the backyard, I've decided to position the solid lift overflow in the middle of the fish tank. There are a number of people who like to put the solid lift overflow in the corner of the fish tank. However, in my mind, it makes more sense to put it in the middle in as much as it evenly sucks up all of the fish waste from the bottom of the tank. But at the end of the day, it's not critical as to where you put the solid lift overflow in the tank because once all the fish are in there swimming around, they constantly agitate all of the solid waste on the bottom of the tank and it will eventually make its way up the solid lift overflow and into the radial flow settler or into the grow beds, depending on how you choose to set up your system.
Now guys, when it comes to setting up your IBC fish tank, there's a couple of things that you need to consider. Firstly, you wanna be able to block out as much of the sunlight from entering into the fish tank, the sump tank, and the grow beds for that matter, because sunlight in water produces algae. The last thing you want in your system is an algae bloom, because algae is going to rob the nutrients out of your system and steal it from the rest of the plants. Now, as you can see, I've used the black IBC, therefore I would not have to paint the IBC in the future. However, I do have transparent IBCs that I will use to build the rest of the system, including the sump and the grow beds. Now, I personally have decided to clad the entire system with timber at the end, which will block out all of the sunlight. But if you have transparent IBCs, then you will want to give them a coat of paint. If you choose to go down that road, then I would highly recommend that you give the IBC a good sanding and then use a primer as a base coat before you put your final coat of paint on it. The plastic in IBCs doesn't really hold paint too well. However, I have painted systems in the past and you do have to give them a bit of a touch up from time to time when the paint cracks and chips off. But apart from that, it is a viable option to paint them if that's the way you choose to go. You'll also want to consider putting a lid on your fish tank in order to block out the sunlight and prevent debris from falling in and fouling up the system. I'm going to make my lid out of the same timber that I'll be cladding the system with and so I'll be doing that in a future video. Well, now that we've completed the construction of the fish tank and installed the solid lift overflow, it's time to go ahead and reinstall the bars on top of the cage and complete the fish tank build. Now the reason that I like to reinstall the bars on top of the cage is because I like to use them as an anchor point for an air stone in the system. Now when it comes to pumping water throughout your system into the fish tank from the sump tank, you're gonna need to consider what type of pump you will require. And ultimately, that depends on the size and style and layout of your aquaponic system. I'm not gonna talk about that in this video. In fact, I'm going to dedicate an entire video to that subject in the future. But there you have it guys, that's how you build a fish tank for an aquaponic system out of an IBC container. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification because next week we'll be doing another video on how to build a radial flow settler in order to add it to the fish tank in this system. While you're at it, give the video a thumbs up, that helps the YouTube algorithm and we'll catch you in the next one.